it's Izzy from Tech Tire and Wheel here to welcome you to the Tech Passenger Puncture Repair Course. In this course, we will discuss the steps for a proper one-piece puncture repair. We will teach you the tech recommended repair process, which includes techniques, tools, product application, and the proper way to install a repair. This course focuses on passenger one-piece repairs. That is, a repair that has both an uncured vulcanizing rubber stem and integrated patch, thus one piece. We created a simple acronym, R-E-P-A-I-R, -E to help you remember the steps used to perform a proper tire repair. R represents remove the tire from the wheel and inspect. E stands for evaluate the injury. P means prepare the injury. A is for apply vulcanizing fluid. I means install repair. And R, return to service. Today's course focuses on the first step in proper tire repair, which is R, remove the tire from the wheel and inspect the tire. By removing the tire from the wheel, this allows you to fully inspect the tire, including the inside of the tire, for any non-repairable conditions. This inspection is to ensure the tire is able to be repaired and is safe to be returned to service. Your inspection should include the bead area, the side walls, the tread area, and the inside of the entire tire. If you see any injuries, mark them during this inspection process with a high quality tire marker. There are several conditions deemed by the tire industry guidelines as non-repairable conditions. These are, a tire that has been run flat or run on underinflated conditions, tire inner liner separations, tire casing separations, excessive tread wear, exposed body plies or cables, deformed bead, exposed fabric or steel, ozone cracking, damage from impacts. Once you determine that the tire does not suffer from any of these non-repairable conditions, it is time to begin the second step in the process, which is E. This stands for evaluating the injury. As you evaluate the injury to a tire, if the object that punctured the tire is still present, you will now need to remove it. This is the perfect time to visually examine the injured area of the tire. Next, by using Tech's TRT-105 inspection tool, you will be able to quickly and precisely measure the size and the angle of the injury while minimizing the chance of enlarging the damaged area. The injury size and angle are two critical pieces of information you will need to select and install the appropriate repair. The industry standard for a one-piece repair is 25 degrees. Tech has performed extensive in-house testing and engaged an independent outside testing facility to determine the maximum angle of injury that Tech products can safely repair. The results from both in-house and the independent lab confirm that Tech's one-piece repair system can safely repair an injury angle of 35 degrees or less. Also, remember the injury size has limitations per industry standards. For passenger and fabric body ply LT tires, the maximum injury size is a quarter inch or six millimeters. For steel body ply LT and larger tires, the maximum injury size is three eighths or 10 millimeters. In this example, the injury is less than 35 degrees, so a tech one piece Uniseal Ultra Repair can be used. Here we can see the injury has accepted the tool just below the second line. This calls for the use of a Tech 250 UL Uniseal Ultra Repair for a quarter inch or six millimeter injury. Next, we are going to talk about the third step in the tech process, which is P, prepare the injury. You now need to pre-clean a large area around the injury on the inner liner of the tire by applying Tech Rubomatic Rubber Cleaner. Begin by spraying or pouring Tech Rubomatic on the area to be cleaned. While the area is still moist, use a rubber scraper to remove contaminating substances. This process should be repeated three times to guarantee complete removal of contaminants, such as silicone mold lubricants used in the tire's manufacturing process. Next, center a Tech 111 TM repair template over the injury. Using a tire marker, trace around the edge of the template. At the end of the course, be sure to download the complete list of tools and products used in this course. Now the line you traced around the template will serve as a guide for mechanical buffing of the inner liner. If a template is unavailable, freehand trace an area half an inch larger than the repair unit. This will ensure the buffed area is large enough for proper installation of the repair unit. Next, 
mechanically buff within the marked area using a low RPM buffer designed specifically for tire service. Make sure your buffer does not exceed 5,000 RPMs. This includes angle grinders. If the speed of the tool exceeds 5,000 RPMs, scorching of the rubber surface will occur, which will greatly reduce the adhesion of the repair unit to the inner liner. Also, be sure to use an appropriate buffing wheel to achieve a number one or number two buffed texture. Mechanical buffing ensures proper adhesion of the repair unit to the inner liner by creating a clean textured surface. Let me show you the proper buffing technique to create the ideal buffed surface of the inner liner. Be sure to run the buffing wheel from side to side across the inner liner as shown. This will prevent cutting grooves into the inner liner and promotes better adhesion. After you have achieved the proper buff texture, use the appropriate size tech carbide cutter. Again, in a low speed drill with a maximum of 1200 RPMs to properly prepare the injury. The low speed drill eliminates the possibility of scorching the rubber in the injury. It is important to follow the angle of the injury you previously determined from the inside of the tire. Equally important is to ensure your drill is rotating in a clockwise rotation. Now drill out the injury and repeat this process a minimum of three times in a passenger or light truck tire. If working on a tire with steel body plies, it will require five passes through the tire with the carbide cutter. Next, repeat this procedure three times from the outside of the tire to ensure proper injury preparation. Five passes through the tire will be needed on tires with steel body plies. Next, the A in text process represents applying the vulcanizing fluid. Let's get started. After you have buffed the proper size area of the tire's inner liner, you now need to fully remove any leftover particles. Using a soft wire brush on a low RPM tool, lightly brush to remove loose buffing dust and steel shavings from the buffed surface. This is an important step to create a clean prepared surface to maximize repair unit adhesion. You may need to repeat this process two to three times to ensure that all buffing dust and steel shavings are removed. Do not use a compressed air line for this procedure. The compressed air may contain moisture and oil that will contaminate the buffed surface. Now, vacuum all buffing dust and steel shavings from the tire. Avoid contacting the buffed surface with the vacuum as this can contaminate your prepared surface which will compromise your repair adhesion. Next, apply Tech 760 chemical vulcanizing fluid into the injury from inside the tire using a spiral cement tool. When inserting the tool, be sure to rotate in a clockwise direction. This procedure should be repeated three to five times depending on the thickness of the tire. You will leave the spiral cement tool in the injury to prevent the fluid from drying completely. Follow this by applying a thin, even coat of chemical vulcanizing fluid to the buffed surface of the inner liner. Do not apply vulcanizing fluid to any unprepared surfaces. This could lead to contamination of the repair area and the can of vulcanizing fluid. You need to allow approximately three to five minutes for the vulcanizing fluid to dry. Additional drying time is required in cold and humid climates. Vulcanizing fluid must be completely dry before applying the repair to avoid trapping solvent under the repair, which could create a bubble, which leads to inadequate adhesion and ultimately could result in the repair failing. Next, a fifth step in the tech repair process, which is I for install the repair. In our previous course, you applied the vulcanizing fluid and have allowed enough time for it to dry. Next, you will prepare the Uniseal Ultra Repair Unit for installation. Begin by removing the colored protective poly wrap from the stem by twisting and pulling the stem to break the poly free. Next, reposition the poly on the repair to expose the center of the repair unit. A word of caution, touching the cushion gum will cause contamination that may lead to repair failure. That is why you will use the poly film as a place to hold the repair. Now, apply Tech 760 chemical vulcanizing fluid to the black tapered area of the stem only. This ensures proper lubrication to make the insertion of the repair unit into the void you created with your carbide cutter easier. If you are using a tire spreader, be sure to relax the tire beads to prevent wrinkling or what is known as bridging of the repair unit. Bridging creates areas where the portions of the repair are not making full contact with the tire's inner liner. This can lead to premature failure of the repair. 
you may now remove the spiral cement tool. Then feed the lead wire of the Uniseal Ultra into the injury area from the inside of the tire. Next, grasp the lead wire on the outside of the tire with a pair of pliers and carefully begin to pull the Uniseal Ultra into the injury. Pull until the repair unit seats against the inner liner. Be sure not to overpull. This will cause dimpling and possibly breakage of the stem. Once the Uniseal Ultra is in place, press down on the center of the repair unit with your thumb. Now using your stitcher, stitch the repair unit down working from the center outward. This process removes any air which might be trapped between the repair unit and the inner liner of the tire. Exert firm pressure on the stitcher to maximize adhesion. After partially stitching the repair, remove the colored poly from under the edges and continue stitching to the edges of the repair. After stitching is completed, make sure to remove the clear protective covering found on the cap of the repair as shown. Now you will go to the outside of the tire and cut off the Uniseal Ultra stem approximately an eighth of an inch or three millimeters above the tire's outer surface. The Uniseal Ultra repair is now properly in place. Next, return the tire to service. When repairing a tubeless tire, seal the edge of the repair unit and the overbuffed area with tech number 738 security coat or number 739 butyl liner repair sealer. These repair sealers help to restore the air retention properties of the area of buffed inner liner outside of the area covered by the repair as shown. So what all is entailed in returning the tire to service? Well, we have to remount the tire to the wheel, then balance the tire and wheel assembly, then install the wheel assembly to the vehicle, and finally, relearn the TPMS if needed. Be sure to properly torque the lug nuts to manufacturer specifications. I know this sounds easy, but I really understand all the effort required to return the tire to service. If you want to learn more about Tech's complete line of tire repairs, specialty chemicals, and all the tools used in our Tech training course, refer to the list at the end and contact your Tech distributor or visit techtirerepairs.com.